Hi, welcome to this film about dipole-dipole forces, which is um, the second of the three as we've listed them, the, the intermolecular forces that you're going to be covering in year 12. Um, hopefully by the end of this film you will understand why polar molecules will um, have intermolecular forces that arise as a result of permanent dipoles. And hopefully you'll also remember that these molecules, just because they have dipole-dipole forces, it doesn't mean they can't have dispersion forces. In fact, they will have dispersion forces. And what we'll also look at is the fact that these dispersion forces could actually be more important in terms of the boiling point than the dipole-dipole forces, even though we are going to try and be in the habit of thinking of dipole-dipole forces as being stronger if we are asked to make the comparison. Okay, so... Why do polar molecules attract one another? Well, if you remember what we were talking about in the um, polar bonds and polar molecules film, this diagram shows us that we've got two HCl molecules. They're polar. They're polar molecules because the chlorine is more electronegative than the hydrogen, so the electrons, instead of being here in the middle of the bond, they're over towards the chlorine. And so this end of the bond is more negative, and that's the only bond in an HCl molecule, so this end of the molecule is more negative. So this is a permanent dipole. Okay, It looks a little bit like the instantaneous dipole that you saw with dispersion forces, because there's a slightly negative end to the molecule and a slightly positive end. But this isn't constantly fluctuating around. Okay, This is permanent because... The chlorine is always more electronegative than hydrogen. So these electrons won't be sometimes over here and sometimes over there, like they would be with dispersion forces, but they'll always be down this end of the molecule. Or that is to say the electron cloud is permanently distorted in this direction. Okay? That doesn't mean it can't wobble around a bit, but this end will always be more negative than the other end. This here, this dotted line, is the intermolecular force. It's a dipole-dipole attraction because it's two dipoles attracting one another. Okay, And this dipole here in this molecule, this hasn't been induced by this next-door molecule. It's just also another permanent dipole. So the attraction between two polar molecules comes mainly from the fact that we've got this permanent dipole on each molecule. There will also be dispersion forces, and we'll see shortly that these can even outweigh the dipole-dipole forces. So, should a permanent dipole be stronger than a temporary one? Well, if we just um, ignore HF on this graph for now, because we haven't done hydrogen bonding yet, and um, it would be better to, um, to study hydrogen bonds before we try and explain why there's this quirk at the start of the group. This is group 7, okay? So we're looking down the halogens. We're starting with fluorine, but we're ignoring that one. And then we're going down to chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay? So we should be thinking of chlorine as the most electronegative. Okay? All these molecules are just diatomic. So we've got HCl, HBr, and HI. And if we just look at the electronegativities of these three elements, then we should think, well, hydrogen chloride is the most electronegative. Therefore its bond will be most polar. In other words, this end of the molecule will be more negative than this end of the molecule is in HBr, and this end of the molecule is in HI. And in fact, as we go down the group, the polarity of the molecules should be falling, and it does. The polarity of the molecules falls, but look, the boiling point is gradually increasing. So this is a graph of boiling points. It doesn't say that, but this is a graph of boiling points. And we can see that HCl has the lowest boiling point of these three. Now, what else might be at play here? Well, what we should also know from the film about dispersion forces is that dispersion forces depend on the number of electrons. The number of electrons as we go down the group is constantly increasing. In fact, it's increasing by quite a lot. And so, in spite of the fact that these molecules are becoming less polar and weaker dipole-dipole forces, the dispersion forces are actually getting stronger because the number of electrons is increasing. And the increase in the strength of dis the dispersion forces is bigger than the decrease in the strength of the dipole-dipole forces. So in this graph, we can actually see that dispersion forces are dominating the dipole-dipole forces. That's not to say that we should think of dispersion forces as being stronger than dipole-dipole interactions. 
Okay, a permanent dipole, because of the fact it's permanent, should lead to stronger attractions than a temporary one, in general, everything else being equal. But we can see here that if you have lots and lots of electrons, your temporary dipole can actually end up outweighing your permanent one. Okay, so that's about it for dipole-dipole interactions. Any molecule that is polar will exhibit dipole-dipole interactions. Only non-polar molecules will have only dispersion forces. But polar molecules, because they have dipole-dipole interactions and dispersion forces, we need to make sure that we're remembering to talk about both of them in questions. Okay, So just because you've spotted a molecule that has dipole-dipole forces, don't forget to remember, don't forget to remember, or just simply remember, that it will also have dispersion forces. Okay, next film to watch is the final type and the strongest type of intermolecular force that we study in year 12, and that's called the hydrogen bond. So can I suggest that you go on to that film next?